Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here and this is the third video in the Building a Reusable Django App Playlist. If this is the first time to this uh, channel, then please subscribe, please like and please share the content as there's massive help. And if you'd like to support this channel to help me make content quickly and of a better quality, then there's a link to our Patreon page in the description below. So, in the last two videos, we were building out a newsletter app that we could then remove from the project, package it, and then import it using PIP so that anyone could actually use this application anywhere in the world for any project that they're working on. So we've built, we've started an app, we've built the models, done the views, done the URLs, done template tags, done HTML documents. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to string this, doc, this application into the did demo app. So this is what you would do if you were to import using pip, install using pip. You would then go through this process to string it together to your application. So let's go ahead and do that so we can actually benefit from this uh, new app. So look at my screen. This is the current website. Um, uh, easy coding, yeah, it's got all sorts of bits and pieces, but not much going on. So what I want is a newsletter uh, element here. So that's what we're gonna do. So if I open up Sublime Text, uh, this is the did demo, this is Sublime Text, and what we wanna do is we wanna go into our main app, views, and remember we've got the newsletter form we need to import, so from newsletter dot forms, import news letter form. Uh, we also then need to go from newsletter dot um, models import uh, newsletter and what we're going to do we're going to add this to the home page you can add this to all of them if you really wanted to you can add it into your foot in which case you'd add it to your um, context processor so that it's available in all of your um, views however that's generally not how we manage forms so when you manage a form you instantiate a form in the get request and then you um, you have a post request in your view or you handle a post in a view and then it processes the form if it's valid so you, you would need to do this on almost every view anyway so I want it in the home view so what I'm going to do I'm going to change this home view into a form uh, this template view home view into a form view because um, that then is a it's a template view. So I'm going to use the Django views generic list uh, at uh, sorry generic edit and use the form view from there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm just going to copy it across because I was playing around with this earlier. We don't need this get context data, so I'm going to remove that. But what you need to do, you still say what template it's going to be. So it's main index form class newsletter form, and the success URL is currently newsletter. Uh, okay, well actually that won't change. That is the URL that's in the newsletter app, but it's the HTML document that will be rendered which may change and it will by the end of this video. So we then got a function, sorry, a, a method called form valid. So if the form is, um, if the post request is valid and the form is valid, then it will save the form to the model newsletter. And that's it, that's all we need to do for the home view. So we'll save that, but we do now need, we need a temporary view in here. We need this temporary view because we want to test the emails. We're not going to be sending emails in this app just yet, but I just want the um, functionality to be able to test to see if the link will work in an email. So we're going to call this view test email and it's the template view and it's going to be picking up a HTML document that we haven't built yet called NL underscore email, which will be in the main app. And we're passing through, so we're getting, uh, let's, Right, we, we are um, passing, so we're calling the get context data method. So we're adding to the context a, um, a keyword called NL, and we're looking at the newsletter objects, and we're getting an object which is email Bobby. So, so Bobby, it did coding. And I'll create this today. Right, okay, I'll create this before we actually look at the email or do the test. So that's our view changed. We now need to add uh, the new path to our URLs. This will be temporary and we will remove this. But that's now one called email. Uh, so yeah, it's test email, that's what we just added. So that, that means when we go to that um, view, it will render a HTML document that we'll do in a second. In fact, let's do that now. 
new file, save this as, uh, we're gonna go into templates in main, main, and we'll call this NL, I think it was under, yeah. Underscore email HTML, and what we'll do, I've just got the code here that we'll have. Saves me typing it all out. There we have it. So um, at the very top, we're loading news tags. If you remember in the template tags, where are we? That is in newsletter, so template tags, news tags. This is what we're loading, okay? So we're loading uh, news tags, and we'll be then have access to NL unsubscribe, okay? Go back into NL email. This is the head and this is the styling that we've got, which is exactly the same as the uh, the other one that we we're building out earlier for the app itself. The body, not much going on, but we have got a H1 tag. So this will be, this will just be a H1 element in the middle of the screen and it will just say unsubscribe with a link. Now just picture that as a, as a link at the bottom of your email that you're sending out to your mail shot, um, all of the users that you've got subscribed to your newsletter and at the bottom it will just have this tiny little writing at the bottom saying unsubscribe you click on that and it will um, then process it but if you see here we've got a template tag so it's nl unsubscribe first keyword is email equals nl dot email so we're passing through into the context the newsletter object and we're getting from that the email and the reason it's just default into four so and I'll, sh I'll sh show you what that means in a second when we're at putting it into the settings.py file. But regardless, if we can't find that keyword in a dict, which will be an empty dict, it will just say not, not specified, so it will work anyway. So we'll save that. Now we need to create, I found an element in our fancy HTML that we downloaded in the last playlist. Um, and what we'll do, we'll create a new file and we'll save this as, and this will just be newsletter, but it will be in partials. HTML. Yeah, use that HTML. And then what we'll do, we will go into index and we will include this here. So underneath testimonials, just above the footer, we will add newsletter. Uh, that's, that's, I don't need those notes there. So now this will uh, inject in the piece of uh, HTML that we'll add in here. So I've found the section in a template that I like, which is, and this is what it looks like. So this has come straight off the HTML document from the, um, the ones we downloaded from Theme Forest. Don't like that, that's a load of gibberish. But I do like Joiner or what I'll do, I'll put subscribe to, to our newsletter. Okay, so that's what that will be. And then we've got this form element here. So we're going to do some bits and pieces to that. And this is what the, um, anyone who installs um, Django Manage Newsletter using PIP will need to do this because the, form, we, the, the, the newsletter app comes with a form. It's a model form, right? And it's got a field email. Now, you could render form, you could just, under here you could put a CSRF tag and then you could put um, something along these lines and that would just render out the form from newsletter. But um, all of these templates that we're using will have certain CSS and they'll have classes and if you did that it would just look really ugly, it would just be a very, very basic input element and it'll have um, not much going on. So we want to use this input element that comes with a template because it's got all the CSS added. So this is a type text where we change that because straight away this needs to be an email. Um, class form control. Now you could go into the newsletter app and change that, but this newsletter app needs to be quite kind of, um, it needs to be good for any app that it's being used on. Well, if you use form control, that's, that's quite specific to this project. We don't want that. We don't want it to be specific to any project. We just want it uh, to be uh, malleable enough for any project so any developer can use it. So the input is type email. It needs to be email because we are catching an email. Class in this case is form control, which is, it is what it is. And a placeholder, I think in the form it says email with a star, but th let's have your email address, which is fine. But what we need, when you're using Django Forms, you need an ID and you need a name in the input form because if you submit it without it, it just won't work. So we'll have ID equals, and we'll have name equals. Oh, we might need, yeah, we'll need 
the speech marks there. And what we'll do, you access, we access the ID by, because form, because we're using a form view, you access the form rendered to the template using form. And then it's the email field and it's ID for label. That will render the ID as the ID of the form, which is ID underscore email. The name will be email, but we'll still access that um, in the same way as we just did, which is form. So this will be part of the readme file when you, um, or the documentation on um, PIP when we're installing. So we need to tell people using this app how to use it. So it's form email dot name. So that input field will now be a valid import in, input field for the form itself. So what we need is a CSRF token, which is a template tag that you need. We'll call this ID, we'll call this newsletter form. And at the top here we'll have method equals post. Button, type button, no, we want submit. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that is it. So that is the section that now will be uh, included in the indexed index um, HTML. So if I open up my browser and go into this is admin. So just update quickly. So this is newsletter. That's the uh, newsletter subscriptions. You can see we've got nothing in there currently. We just go to home template does not exist. That's a great start, isn't it? Classic me, look, it says new letter. So let's rename that to newsletter and we'll open up the browser again and let's see if it'll work. Happy days, right, okay. If we scroll to the bottom, let's see what it looks like. Subscribe to our newsletter. It's not the prettiest. I think if I was to, this, um, I've, I've shrunk down my browser just for, uh, it makes it a lot easier to edit these videos. So that'll probably look good on a bigger browser, but I'm quite happy with that. Subscribe to our newsletter. If we add Bobby at did coding.com and subscribe what happens let's have a look it works right so thank you for subscribing to our newsletter so it is redirecting us to the html document that comes in the newsletter app which is great right but we don't want that um, html document we want a bespoke html doc document uh, because that looks ugly right so uh, if i go back in here and update there we go so bobby did coding Timestamp, updated, happy days, email, great. Subscribe to the newsletter is true, but the token, that's the token, right? Okay, so that's the token we're gonna use. Unsubscribe reason would be blank at this point. So what we want to do now is we wanna open up our HTML, uh, sorry, our Sublime Text, and we want to, we go into templates. You see here, we've got 400, 403, 5, and coming soon, right? So we, we knocked these up some time ago in the last playlist. So if I open up the 404 and if I, yeah, if I save as, I'm going to call this newsletter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wording that's in this. So if sub, and I'm going to dump that in the, what I've just done here, page not found. So hopefully now when we, uh, and I'll change this in the settings file, because remember we're referencing um, a variable in settings that isn't currently there. That's why it's default into the newsletter HTML document, not the one that we want. So if sub, then this is what we're seeing on the screen. Thank you for subscribing. If, there's no, if it's an unsubscribe, then it will show this. And we'll also have a little link here that will take them back to the homepage, which is exactly what we want, right? So we'll save that. And now in our settings.py file, um, at the bottom here, we will add, um, what is it? NL redirect HTML. Is that right? Let me just check. Newsletter, where is it? Newsletter views, that's the unsubscribe. So it's this one here. 
just make sure yeah okay and then if I just go back in the views actually and I'll take this unsubscribe dict as well because this is another variable that we'll want but we'll look at that in a second so NL um, there we have it and just to double check yeah okay so we'll reference that so it's just newsletter.html so hopefully now it's reloading which is good if I go back in here there we go so now this is what will be rendered instead of what comes straight out of the box of the newsletter app that we just written so thank you for subscribing to our newsletter click to go back home and I'll go back home great so that's how we would use a bespoke HTML documents to work with the newsletter app that we're just building brilliant I'm happy with that um, and then what we'll do we will look at the what was it email forward slash email okay so this is the ugly HTML document that we're using just to replicate or mimic what an email would be like so if I just hover over that you can see at the bottom of the screen here that it says localhost 8000 that's because we're using sites and it explicitly says that in the, uh, the Django uh, admin page but that would be diddemo.com if we were in production so diddemo.com slash newsletter question mark and it then appends um, question mark email um, Bobby at didcoding.com then it's got a token and it's got reason for that's because we explicitly said that in the HTML document which I'll show you again just to remind you where is it where is it where is it in our email right so we put four but you would loop through that maybe if you had a dictionary so you'd loop through the values um, uh, yeah keys and values of the dictionary and then you would add reason code that would be the key so it'd be a key one two three and four and you might have um, unsubscribing because the content's not relevant you email too much yada 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 but I'm just defaulting to four we won't find that key because so it will just say non not specified I believe that's what we had in there so if I click unsubscribe we're sorry to hear that you want to unsubscribe to our newsletter resubscribe if you change your mind I mean it's quite big tech we might want to change it to h2 but h1 is good for now um, and if I go back in the, into admin and click on this there we go not specified token is still there and they've now unsubscribed from the newsletter so the app works I am over the moon with that so if we go back into home page and yeah we'll stay here if I now just test that once more and we'll put uh, Bobby at did demo dot com thank you for subscribing go back into newsletter subscriptions there we go did demo dot com and that is uh, newsletter bang on and the tokens different there you go so the app so the app works I'm over the moon with that. We're going to end this video here because it's been about 20 minutes. So just to cap off and kind of bookend the last three videos, we started a new app. We made it complete standalone. So we weren't linking it to any other apps in our project. We were always linking it to settings.py. Um, before we finish this video, actually, we'll just build that dictionary quickly in the settings file. But other than that, we started the app. We built the models. We registered them. We built the views and the URLs and then we done the template tags the html documents and then what we did is we that was the end of building the app essentially we got it to the point that we would have installed it using pip and then what we did is we we we, we added form elements to html we we changed one of the views and this is exactly what you would have to do if you were installing a pip library uh, because all of them need to be um, configured to work with your project right so we went ahead and done that so essentially the steps we just went through is exactly what we'll put in the readme file which will be part of pip when it's installed so that's that the next video we will start actually um, removing the app from the project and packaging it up um, so that it will be a standalone project and then what we'll do we'll add it to pip so we can then install it and test it so that's what we're going to do in the next video thanks for watching if this is new if you're new to the channel then please subscribe please like and please share the content 
Thanks for watching, I've enjoyed making it. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.